Okay, so in this video we're gonna keep working on our scene and then we're gonna uh, start exporting the render passes and creating our final render. So the render now is pretty good. Uh, it's all good. It's kind of it's basically final. Uh, what we want to do now is just export the settings and the render passes. So let's close this. Let's go to the settings here, and then let's go from beginning in the common. Let's call this uh, forest uh, render. Uh, and then uh, for the image format, let's do uh, PNG. Uh, this is all good here. We don't need to change anything. And then we want to go here to name underscore uh, number dot extension. And then we're going to do our uh, scene uh, length, which is 300. So here we can see the final result was going to be. And then the camera, camera one, and then the preset. Let's click on maintain aspect ratio. Uh, and then let's change the settings. So we we want to render the output going to be uh, HD 720p. So if we scroll down here, so this is uh, the result of this width and uh, height. But uh, for us, uh, we're going to be applying an After Effects like a camera shake. So the camera shake, it's a wiggle, and it's going to basically uh, it's gonna, we have to scale the scene a little bit in order to have room for the camera to wiggle in uh, X and Y but the issue with it will reduce the quality so we want to render a little bit uh, bigger size than the output size so this way we have more room without losing the quality of our render so let's increase it a little bit so something like uh, 1458 uh, sorry something like this uh, should do the job or 100 uh, 4050 it doesn't matter uh, just something will give us uh, extra room so this way we can render uh, our scene and then uh, we're not gonna have any issues if we're gonna apply a camera shake or anything that require extra uh, um, margins so this is all good here we don't need to do anything so all set up and still maintain HD ratio here, so it's all good. And then let's go to Arnold Render here. And here we're gonna start playing with the settings. Um, so there's multiple ways how we can approach the increasing the quality in the render. First thing and very important, we need to lock the sampling pattern. So this way Arnold, uh, when you render the camera movement, it will maintain whatever like the calculation done on the right on the lighting for let's say global illumination or, or anything related to the light it will not be recalculated every frame because if uh, the light gets recalculated every frame you cannot start having a uh, weird flickering and stuff like that and that's mental ray we had lots of issues with this when you use final gather or global illumination mental ray so to fix this in arnold for example uh, since this is the one we're using we just click and lock sampling pattern and you never have any issue with the lighting uh, getting flickering from one frame to another so this is very important anytime you do animation make sure you click on look uh, lock sampling pattern and uh, for the end we can increase this we're not gonna increase individually we're just gonna increase the uh, camera the AA sampling and this will influence everything underneath it so as you can see from the numbers here if i put it to two you can see the diffuse becomes 16 and the specular like all these uh, reduce if i put it like to eight everything get increased and we did for our final render we did have uh, eight for the camera so this is what we're gonna be using like uh, eight so this is just to keep in mind but for now let's keep it at uh, two or three and then clamping that's something really important this is uh, sometimes you get really very bright spots in your scene like uh, like uh, white pixels and we want to make sure this is get uh, like uh, crushed uh, and these white pixels doesn't show up like anymore so you can click on clamp uh, AA samples and let's affect all AOVs so because we're gonna be rendering uh, AOVs which is uh, we're gonna reach in a second so let's make sure this settings will also affect the individual render passes so if there is like very bright spots will also influence them as well so let's change this to 2 and then also we can change that to 2 as well uh, and then uh, we can uh, move on now uh, to the next uh, section which is the filter and this one is a really important one as well for our render settings because it does uh, the filter does influence the look of the scene and then I I uh, show you guys here 
uh, this is in the Arnold uh, uh, website and they talk about the filter types here and they have like a nice documentation it talks about it and uh, how influence this can influence your render results but uh, this is important I wanted to show you guys they really recommend using the Gaussian uh, width with two or the black man Harris filters so let's use uh, the a black man Harris filter here this one and then uh, let's reduce it to 1.8 so the lower the filter it's it's less blurry so if you have the filter really high it gets very blurry the image and then the lower uh, you you lower this filter it gets less blurry so the the default is 2 which is pretty good uh, but i reduce it to 1.8 it's not gonna affect the render time these uh, these filters doesn't affect the render times according to arnold so so this should be good this mention it somewhere around here uh, i'll leave the link for you guys so you can uh, check it out uh, and then read more details about it but uh, this is pretty good for now uh, these filterings is just basically all artistic representation so you can pick whatever one that works for the scene or the look that you're going for so these settings I'm showing you guys is just based on uh, you know based on how you want your scene to look like okay so let's go to this AOVs and this one's really important because now when we render our scene we get like everything combined into one image all the passes the beauty the specular the subsurface the fuse like everything combined and we want to split it out we want to have like everything split out so this way we can control how much specular or how much uh, subsurface we can have in our scene maybe we want to increase the subsurface maybe we want to decrease it so we can do that in comp without going back to maya and re-render everything so let's start adding uh, these passes so you can click on this built-in and then here you have the list of all the passes Arnold give us so first we want to start with the basics ones the really important one so we want to go with uh, first the diffuse direct and then the diffuse indirect so this is going to give us more like the diffuse coloring the direct and the indirect from like uh, from bouncing light bouncing and all this kind of stuff so you can add as much passes as you want you know but uh, for us we're gonna pick like the minimum passes that does uh, the best job and then the next uh, will be of course a specular so let's click on specular we want to have a specular pass separate and then the specular also indirect as well that will be very helpful okay and then indirect mean like through that uh, you know the bounce the, the light when it hits the ground and bounce around and there is some circular or diffuse that's where uh, it mean and then the last thing we let's select is uh, sss which so is subsurface scattering so we have now all these passes created the diffuse direct diffuse indirect specular specular indirect and then the sss that's pretty good for us for now like we this is these like if you combine them basically we're gonna be able to recreate this image by combining all these facets uh, without any losing any of the data so now we have all these passes that's pretty good let's uh, select uh, select aov node and then let's uh, go to the settings uh, and then uh, here everything is good we don't need to really change anything but let's go to the default arnold driver and uh, here there's merge AOVs this one we don't need to check it so this one basically when we click merge AOVs it's gonna basically have all these render passes combined into the image and then we need to use like a uh, like a way in After Effects to basically separate them but we want uh, Maya to export these passes already separated each one in its own folder with its images so make sure we don't check merge AOVs so this way uh, we have all these passes uh, split up separately in their own folder so this way we can just import them and combine them it's just one thing I wanted to talk to you guys about just to make sure uh, uh, we don't accidentally click merge OVs here so everything else here is pretty good we basically have all our scenes set up and then I'm gonna just show you guys let me first go here and then reduce the render uh, back to HD uh, 540 and then when I want to render the final, I will increase it back to the, uh, to the settings. Just let's save and then let me just render. Now when we're going to render, the best way, if you want to look at the passes we just created, we can't really, uh, as far as I know, there is no way to, to check it through the Maya default render. 
so the only way to do it is basically using the render uh, from Arnold so let's click here on render and then as you can see Arnold now is rendering um, our scene so we'll wait until it gets rendered and then uh, we can uh, we can take a look at the passes and see what exactly each one looks like. Okay, so let's uh, take a look at uh, uh, the renders we have, the passes. So you can see here in this window, in this drop down, we can see all the passes. So now it's the beauty, which is basically everything is combined. So let's check to diffuse direct. You can see this is a diffuse direct. This is the diffuse indirect. So this uh, you can see the indirect lighting and some of the even uh, the subsurface is picking up in here and then let's go to the specular so this is all the specular pass so this is very important to have it so we can uh, you know uh, render uh, and then apply it and multiply you know and we can increase the specular or reduce it so you can see the tree leaves the specularity and everything the rocks and all that that's pretty cool and specular indirect as well doesn't show up much but will be show up throughout our scene and then finally the subsurface scattering you can see all subsurface scattering data here is uh, showing really nicely so we're gonna be combining all these passes to basically get this so we're gonna be using this as our reference and then we're gonna combine them start working with them uh, one by one and then start enhancing maybe we want more specular to be showing in our scene maybe we want also more like uh, subsurface to be showing so this way we don't have to stick with this one anymore first we match it and then we start increasing maybe we want more the specular to be showing up everywhere uh, and uh, enhancing maybe the um, subsurface or maybe reducing the subsurface so this is gonna give us a really great flexibility to basically uh, uh, enhance our scene and as I mentioned so this way if we felt like okay we don't have enough specular or we don't have enough uh, subsurface so we don't have to go and re-render because it's gonna take a pretty good time to render each frame so now we can go to the subsurface pass here and then we just can multiply it and then duplicate it and increase it. and this way we can even mask some part of it if we want so this way gonna give us a great flexibility in our renders so this is basically for the render passes and you can see uh, for the filter we cha we adjusted uh, now it's a little bit noisy uh, and that's uh, because we have the settings is really low uh, as you can see let me open the render settings here uh, and then if we go to the Arnold we're gonna increase this uh, something bigger so let's stop the render here uh, and then let's do the final render here so I'm gonna do 8 uh, check your machines how far you how far you can take off the render but for now we're gonna do like 8 it's gonna take maybe 10 to 15 20 minutes per frame uh, and that's really not that long uh, when you work in the movie industry or commercial some frames especially movie industry some frames takes like 20 hour or more per frame to render so but of course they have render farms and things so they can do multiple frames at the same time so in our case, uh, 8 will, will do pretty good. Uh, everything here we don't need to touch. Uh, all good. You can keep it as uh, the Gaussian and then uh, with the uh, filter 2, it's fine. This is just all uh, personal preference. It's not going to make much difference in the final render. Like it's not going to make a humongous difference. So no worries about that. And then the OVs is all good here set up. And then let's increase uh, our render to the final one which is 1458 that's good and then uh, one last thing let's go to the, the the sky light here and then remember we had this set up to the the samples it was really like uh, low so let's increase the samples to something like three uh, you can see how it's improved if you want to like go much higher you can go like six and things like that but let's keep it like around three or four uh, but I highly recommend to go really high sampling uh, just to get really clean no noise in your renders so that's something just to keep in mind this sample is very important anytime you use the lights just make sure you keep an eye on the samples and you keep uh, having a like increase it to have a nice render result so this way everything is good uh, the camera is one everything is good here the last thing we want to do is we go to the uh, rendering and then go render 
and then go render sequence is the options and make sure your camera is selected and then you just uh, click render sequence and close and this way we'll go through all the frames and we'll render everything for us so we're done with this video now we're just gonna render and wait in the next videos we're gonna be working basically on creating some particle simulations uh, for our scene we're gonna create some kind of like a pull-in and like kind of environmental dust and, and things like that that you can find uh, you know in c natural scenes and then the next thing we're gonna be creating some kind of like um, some kind of like atmospheric cloud uh, wind uh, kind of atmospheric wind or cloud that the camera gonna be going through they're not gonna be very noticeable but you're gonna feel them as it's gonna enhance the uh, scene and make it more realistic and cinematic so see you in the next video